Hey there, this is Eric Keller for Blue Patone. I love ZBrush's thick skin. Let me explain why. It's perfect when you want to do elaborate engraving effects. For example, on this beetle here, I used it to make a lot of these details. Let's take a look at how it works and I'll use it to modify the scorpion model, make it look like a piece of art. Thick skin sets a maximum depth for any brush stroke on a given subtool. So for example, I have the abdomen subtool here selected. Let's zoom in on it. I've smoothed out a lot of the details, so I don't have all this bumpy stuff. It's realistic detail like I do in the other parts of the scorpion. This is kind of just smoothed out. And I turned on symmetry. So if I take a brush like the Damien Standard brush, for example, and just start making brush strokes, you can see it digs in there and each brush stroke overlaps the previous one. If I hold the Alt key, it presses out. If I increase the Z intensity and hold the Alt key, then it's gonna press out even more. Or if I release the Alt key, it's gonna dig in even more. So that's what we get. Let's undo all that, control Z. And let's check out thick skin. So to activate thick skin, go into the tool palette and you'll find thick skin down here under slime bridge and above layers. If I click on it, there's just a couple of controls. It's very easy to use. There's a button to activate it and then there's a slider. So if I activate it, you see the slider here says thickness 20. So if I increase this, you're gonna see that subtool swell. And when I release it, it snaps back to normal. So that swelling is giving you a visual representation of the depth of the thick skin. So if I set this to say something like, I don't know, let's do 11 or we could type in like 10. We want to be more precise. And then let's draw some brush strokes. So now you can see it's digging in with that Damien Standard brush. But as I overlap strokes, notice how we don't see it doubling up there. And so this is a great way to create design. So I hold the Alt key, it's gonna press out. I'm gonna undo that. Let's play with the brush settings real quick. Uh, I have this alpha applied to my Damien Standard Brush, Alpha 13. I'm gonna go here in the brush palette and go down to tablet pressure. Let's make sure glo use global settings is off. And then I'll go down here and just kind of pull this edge down a little bit and make kind of a curve there. What that does is that's just going to allow me to create a tapered stroke. So as I increase the pressure on the stroke, I get a thicker stroke. Let's increase the draw size a little bit. There we go. That's a nice kind of brush for doing this kind of design work. A couple things to note about thick skin. First of all, it's part of the undo cue. So if I hit Control Z too many times, it turns thick skin off. And if you have that tool palette hidden while you work, that can kind of throw you off because you wonder why it stops working. So let's undo that. Make sure the thick skin is on. Another thing is that thick skin looks at the current state of the model when the button is activated. So I'll draw a few lines here. Maybe I make them kind of overlap. Make this kind of design here. And then I turn thick skin off and turn it on again. As I draw new strokes, you see how those strokes are digging into the ones that I drew before. They sort of respect each other, but they don't respect the brush strokes created before I turn thick skin on. This can actually be used as an additional effect. So let's go back in time here to, I don't know, we'll use the undo slider. So right here, thick skin is on and I'll make some big strokes. I'm gonna go into the stroke palette and let's decrease lazy steps so it's a little bit smoother. There we go. Undo those strength strokes. And now I'm drawing with thick skin. All right, so if I draw on here, it's not doing anything, but if I turn thick skin off and turn it on again and maybe lower my draw size, then I could do like an additional stroke inside here. So you can use that property of thick screen to your advantage, depending on what you kind of design you want to make. If you take something like, I don't know, the layer brush, and maybe let's set the stroke type to like drag rect and turn it to Z sub. And we can just draw little circles close together. You can get kind of a cool pattern going. And that's how I did some of the effects on the, uh, the beetle here. 
gives it a nice texture. You can also experiment with other types of brushes like VDM brushes, for example. So I have one here. I created a custom one that creates spirals. So maybe I hold the alt key and draw this in and you know, this kind of stuff can be fun when you have them overlapping. A few more tips. Let's say I close ZBrush and I restart ZBrush and I bring my model back to do some more work on it. And let's say I'm modeling it. I'll take the move brush and start moving it around. You see how it's starting to act really weird because the thick skin setting is actually saved with the tool. So if you start working in the model and things are behaving really strangely, double check and see if that thick skin setting has been left on. So it's an easy one to forget. I turn it off. Now things are moving the way that I want them to. The thick skin option is activated per subtool. So right now I'm working on the abdomen. If I alt click on the head subtool to switch to that one, thick skin is off. If I alt click on the abdomen here to switch to that subtool, thick skin is on. Also, if I subdivide this, control D to subdivide, notice how the thick skin is activated, but the slider is grayed out. And again, things can act a little bit strange. So, you want to be careful when you're doing that. If I go back down to subdivision level five and start working on it, it starts to get really wacky. So if your model is behaving in a strange way, double check and see if maybe thick skin was on when you subdivide it. So I think this technique works really well with very simple designs. You don't have to go overboard with complexity. In fact, I think the simpler, the better for this kind of effect. So there you go, thick skin, I love it. Check it out in another material here and see what it might look like if it was cast into metal. If you check out my website, bluepatone.com, under jewelry design, you can see some examples of how I use this in some of the cast jewelry I've done. So for example, this uh, giant hornet pendant, a lot of the details were created using thick skin. Or if you check out the uh, jumping spider ring that I did. A lot of these first strokes were done using thick skin. And it looks really nice when it's cast into metal. So there you go. I love thick skin. Give it a try. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Like and subscribe.